Affinity Photo offers a set of live masks that allow you to mask layer content based on luminosity, hue, and frequency. In this video, I'll show you how to use bandpass masks. First, I'm going to add a live unsharp mask filter by going to Layer, New Live Filter Layer, Sharpen, Unsharp Mask. I'll zoom into the image here, and I'll add some fine detail sharpening by using a small radius of 1 and bringing the factor up to 4. Now I'm going to mask this sharpening effect using a live bandpass mask. I'll go to Layer, New Live Mask Layer, Bandpass. This will create a bandpass mask that sits inside the unsharp mask layer, and you'll notice the sharpening effect has disappeared. Let's examine what this bandpass mask actually does. For a clearer idea, I can check Preview here, which will render a grayscale representation of the mask. White pixels are opaque, whereas black pixels are transparent. The low and high band sliders are essentially lower and upper thresholds for passing a limited set of frequencies. Decreasing low band and increasing high band will expand the threshold, making more edge detail opaque. The intensity map is a spline graph that represents the weighted grayscale intensity of the opaque pixels. If you want to increase the intensity of these pixels, you can click drag to add a node and bring it up and to the left. Toggling to linear nodes using this option is especially useful for bandpass masks, since you can easily drag this node to the top and slide it left to really increase the intensity. The invert output option will simply invert the current mask output, so this is useful if you want to mask flatter and smoother areas rather than edge detail. Finally, bandpass blur radius will add a Gaussian blur and smooth out the transition between the opaque and transparent pixels. I'll remove the blur for now and uncheck Preview. The mask is already having quite a strong effect, but I will temporarily hide it here on the Layers panel so you can appreciate the difference. Without the mask, the sharpening is applied uniformly across the whole frequency range, sharpening every little detail in the model's face. Once the mask is applied, the sharpening is restricted to a controlled frequency range, and we're no longer excessively sharpening the whole image. I can click drag the node on the intensity map and slide it across the top of the graph to further control the effect. Now you may notice that there is a distinct contouring around the edge of the face here. This is present with or without the bandpass mask and is quite distracting. Live masks behave like regular masks, and that means we can paint onto them as well. So I'll select my paintbrush tool, and on the brushes panel, I'll switch to the masking category and pick a small, soft, round brush. Then I'll make sure my active color is set to black, and I'll paint onto this area to erase from the mask. Back on the Layers panel, we can see that the Bandpass Mask layer now has a thumbnail for its mask, so we've combined traditional manual masking with selective frequency filtering to produce a much better sharpening effect here. And of course, the entire process is completely non-destructive, so I could experiment with increasing the radius, on the Unsharp Mask filter layer, and I could also further modify the settings on the Bandpass Mask. I'll show you one more example of how to use Bandpass Masks. This time, I'm going to add a Brightness Contrast Adjustment. I'll bring the brightness all the way down, and Contrast all the way up. Now I'll add a Bandpass Mask to this adjustment and I'll zoom in here so we can see what's happening. I'll expand to the full range of frequencies that can be masked, then click drag on the intensity map and bring this node to the left and up slightly. Now I'll hide the brightness contrast adjustment, and you can see when I show it again that combining this with a bandpass mask creates a stylized contrast look to edge detail. It also brings out more texture in the wood here. 
I could also experiment with increasing the blur radius to soften the transition between opaque and transparent areas on the mask. This further helps to accentuate this stylized, high contrast look. Anyway, that was a look at the Bandpass mask, with a couple of examples of how you might use it. Compared to the luminosity range and hue range masks, it's perhaps best applied for more subtle effects, and is a great non-destructive alternative to traditional destructive edge detection that you might be using from the filters menu. I hope you found this video useful, and thank you for watching.